What's up guys? How you doing? Malcolm Moore here and in today's video we're going to be talking about what kind of turn you should be doing on what terrain. Now I've made videos about up unweighted turns, down unweighted turns, torsional twist. These are all techniques you can use when you're snowboarding but sometimes it can be a little bit overwhelming about what you should be doing and when. So to start off we're going to take a run and we're going to start with turn size. You alright Indy? You ready? Should you go? Come on boy. So this one is the simplest thing to get right. And basically it goes like this. The mellower the slope you're on, the bigger your turns are. But as it starts to get steeper, you need to bring them in a little bit smaller. Because the goal we're trying to get to in snowboarding is to control our speed with our turn shape. You know, we don't want to be controlling our speed just by doing this, by skidding. You know, it's just not a very good technique. And while you can kind of get away with it on the piece here, say I was to hop over here, just come off the side. Ooh. If I try and skid here, it's really, really nasty. Just bad technique and you don't want to do it. You really want to be controlling your speed as much as possible by your turn shape. So yeah, like I said, big wide open turns when it's mellow. And as it gets steeper, you want to make those turns a little bit tighter, a little bit smaller. So now the next thing, the edge change. And the edge change is essentially, you know, it's when you're going from heels to toes or toe back, toes back to heels. And it's the movements we're doing to go between those two positions. What are we doing to get from our heel edge position, which is like this, into our toe edge position like this? Two different positions, how do we go between them? So I made a video recently on up unweighted turns. And the up unweighted movement basically goes as this. You're coming across the slope, you stand up, and then you sink back down. Stand up, sink back down. As you stand up, the board flattens, and it's easy to cross your hips, to cross your center of mass over the board. Now this type of turn, get out of my way, Indy. Get out of my way. This type of turn, I would say, is the best one for people to learn first. It's a movement that you can do really slowly to get it right. You know, you can do it if you're a complete beginner, you'll feel that board flatten. It's really easy to change edge and it's easy to get this movement right. And not only that, when you do it properly, it's good for like 99% of your situations. So let me just demonstrate a few. Those are a bit basic, the ones I was doing. I'll show you how it can really work. What we've got here, we've got a red slope. It's reasonably steep. I'm gonna show you how those up unweighted turns are gonna help me change an edge here. Right, out of the way you. Come on. Over there you go. Right. Up. Down. Up. Down. Up. Down. Up. Down. Up. Down. So you can see that kind of turn is really working. And I'm not on a very good piece here either. It's pretty slushy, there's lots of old tracks in it. I'm still able to ride pretty well using that type of turn. Now the one thing about these types of turns is it puts you in a slightly weak position at the beginning of the turn. When you stand up, you know, when you're in this tall position, it's not the strongest position. You know, if you're riding something really fast or you're riding something really bumpy, you want to be low down in a strong position to absorb all those bumps. But most of the time, it doesn't actually matter. Because we're only in this weak position at the start of the turn, that top part of the turn, which is what I call the lazy part of the turn. Because all you're doing there is simply going down the hill, going with gravity. There's no external forces acting against you. And by the time the board is pointing back down the slope, it's in the full line, you then sunk back down. And as soon as you turn past the full line, as soon as you start to go across the slope, that's when this force is acting against you. you know, gravity, your momentum, everything, it wants to keep pulling you down and you're fighting against that. 
But in this up unweighted movement, by that point of the turn, you're already down nice and low, ready to absorb those forces. You come back across the slope, you slow yourself down, got your control back, and then you stand up again. So it's about getting this movement in the right place. So watch me do a few more, and you'll see the edge change always happens as I'm traversing across the slope. Good boy, Andy. Ready to do some more? So, coming across the slope, up, down. Cool. So that's your up and weighted movement. And you can use that for all kinds of turns, whether you're on the steeps, whether you're carving, but there was something else actually going on there. I mentioned it at the top, torsional twist. This is when you do use your legs independently as levers. And when you start incorporating that into your riding, that's gonna enable you to make shorter, tighter turns. So because up there behind me was a little bit steeper, I was doing the up and weighted movement but then as I sank back down, as my knees begin to bend, I was letting my front knee, my left knee, bend into the turn first, and then following with my right knee. So now I'll just dem demonstrate some turns using much more of that torsional twist. And you'll see that by doing that, I'm able to stay within a real narrow corridor. In fact, that's the only movement I'm gonna do here. So watch my left knee's gonna go first, right knee follows. Left knee, left leg, left knee, can't speak, right knee. Indy, other way. Okay, so that's just isolated that movement. You see, if you look at my track behind me, I stayed in that real narrow, narrow corridor. So by incorporating those two movements, you know, a bit of the up and weighted movement and a bit of that torsional twist movement using your legs as levers, you can kind of blend them together to create the ideal turn shape for whatever terrain you're on. So there, something quite steep, up on weighted movement to initiate the edge change, and then a light bit of torsional twist to pull the board around in a reasonably tight arc. If I was on something much steeper, I'd be using much more torsional twist to really bring that board around. So those two techniques will be able to get you most places on the mountain really comfortably. You can ride off piste in the slush and stuff using those techniques, but this is where other types of techniques like down unweighted turns can start to have a bit of an edge. So I mentioned the up unweighted turn puts you in a weak position at the start of the turn, but normally that doesn't matter and it won't matter when you're on the piste. But imagine you're in some real bumpy, horrible terrain and even at the start of the turn, even though you're going with gravity, you don't want to be in this tall, easy to get knocked off position. You might want to stay down a little bit lower. And that is where the down unweighted turn can be really helpful. So this one, rather than coming up high at the edge change, you essentially drop down low. And what that does, it allows you to be in this strong position right at the beginning of the turn. You're down low and you can really manipulate the arc of your board. So I'll tell you what we do, we're actually gonna go into some horrible terrain over here and uh, we'll give that a bit of a go. But because you're in this low down strong position as well, the other thing you can do is throughout the turn, if you push against the board, you know, imagine you're stood in a pair of scales, when you stand up, you put more weight through the scales. The same thing happens on a board. As we push against it, we put more pressure through the board and that actually bends it into reverse camber and it allows you to tighten up your arc, so that's what I meant about a minute, a minute ago when I said you can manipulate the arc of your board. But that is also super helpful to do in slushy terrain or in powder, because as you push against the snow, it kind of compresses underneath you and creates this platform that keeps you afloat on it. So a lot of people think powder riding is just about getting the weight on the back foot, but actually it's much more about getting this rhythm where you're constantly pushing against the board, keeping you afloat of it, and then as you make the edge change, you drop down low, and then you're ready in your next turn to push against it. And it's similar technique for slush. So have a look behind me, it's kind of slushy, it's super bumpy and horrible. So I'm gonna change up my turns, it's gonna be more of a down unweighted turn. And sometimes you might not actually see me drop much. I might just kind of stay low for the whole turn. And the way to make the edge change there is really, again, by kind of using your legs as levers to flip that board from heels to toes and toes back to heels. Anyway, just give me a watch. 
stop nattering on. I can natter on all day about snowboarding. Can I, Andy? Yes. Right, let's jump into it. Oh, this is nasty. So just before I even turn, you see I'm being low. I'm using my legs to absorb the bumps one at a time. I'm gonna stay low throughout the edge change. Whoa. And really keep my legs nice and soft. Okay. All right, let's try and do more of a down and weighted turn. Down, push out, down, push out, down, push out. Oh, this is really nasty snow. Woo. So, admittedly, that was not the best demo, but you guys have to trust me, that snow is not too nice. But yeah, you can kind of see that in those scenarios, you want to be in this low position so you're nice and strong. And we don't have any today, but lots of you often ask me, what turns you should do for moguls. And this one technically has its own name. It's called a terrain unweighted turn. It's getting mega confusing, right? But essentially that is just a down unweighted turn, but you make the low down movement when you go over the top of the mogul. So imagine you're riding along, you suck your legs up over the mogul. So you're in this nice low position as you do your edge change, and then you kind of push out through the turn and then the next mogul, as you hit it, you suck your legs up and turn over the top. So what this does as well, it means your legs are working overtime underneath you, bouncing away, but your body, your centre of mass, your head and everything stays relatively smooth going across the top. So I've got one small bit of piece left here at the bottom. I'm going to start riding a little bit harder because it's actually quite difficult to get the down on weighted movement when you're going slow. You need a bit of momentum. The up unweighted movement, you can be going dead slow. That's why it's so easy for beginners and everything. It's so easy to get right. But to get the down unweighted movement done correctly, you need a little bit of speed because as you sink down, you essentially fool your center of mass, fool your body weight onto the inside of the turn. A bit like when you're riding a bike fast, you just kind of lean into it. Same idea with the down unweighted turns. So if you're going too slow and you try and kind of do that, you just, it's, it's not going to work. You need that momentum. So I'll try and show you some turns here. So we get back on the piece, a little bit bumpy. I'll try and do some bigger open carve turns, but with more of a down unweighted turn. And on the piece for carving, you'll see how this allows for a more of aggressive style of riding. Up unweighted, think you're more like a bit of a passenger on the board. You're just following the board's natural arc. Down unweighted, you're pushing against it. You're manipulating that arc and creating the turns you want. Right, let's give this a go. Hopefully I'm not confusing you more. <laughs> Whoa, get off this. Right. So, the aim of this video was to hopefully clear up some questions some of you are having. You know, what should I do? Down unweighted, up unweighted, torsional twist. I'll try and summarise as good as possible now. We started with turn shape. You want to control your speed with your turn shape. Small turns for the steep stuff, medium turns for the medium stuff, and big turns for those mellow greens. Then within that, every edge change, what technique do you need to employ? Most of the time, when I'm riding around casually, I'm doing an up unweighted movement. It's super easy to get it right, and it works really, really well. It puts you in a strong position where you need it, which is when the board turns past the full line. And yeah, as I said, just dead easy to get right. Into that, you can bring in some torsional twist. Say I want to make my turns a little bit more skidded, a little bit smaller. I'll use my knees independently as levers a little bit more on the way down. That's gonna bring the board around in a tighter arc. And then when you start riding more aggressively, that's when I tend to stay in a lower down position, doing more of these down unweighted turns. 
And as I said, I kind of cool them down and weighted even if I'm not necessarily dropping every edge change, but if I'm just staying in that low down position, because what that does puts you in a strong position right at the start of the turn, and allows you to manipulate the arc of your board, get the board going wherever you're going. And that can work for aggressive carving. It can work on the steeps, but really good to have that when you start riding slushy, bumpy conditions, when you're riding powder. And as I say, if you get the timing of it right over moguls as well, it's the same thing technically, but what we call a terrain unweighted turn. And all those turns as well, you're definitely using the torsional twist movement, using your legs as levers to get the board working. So if you're learning, first thing to check out is my video on the up unweighted movement. Get that one dialed in. That'll get you pretty far. Then make sure you can do the torsional twist movement. That's really gonna help you progressing the up and weighted movement and taking it to steep slopes. And then once you've kind of really mastered that, then, is when you can start thinking about down unweighted turns. Make sense? Hopefully. Any questions, pop them down in the comments below. I know I've waffled a little bit more today, but it does start to get a little bit complicated. I haven't even got onto retraction turns yet. That will be another video. So as always guys, thank you for watching. Thank you for bearing with me. Whilst I'm stuck in France with absolutely no chairlifts running. Bit of a ghost town behind me. They're occasionally piecing the slopes, but this one hasn't been done for a few days, hence why it was a bit shoddy. But yeah, give me a thumbs up, a subscribe, all that jazz, and I'll see you for the next one. Bye.